Today's Editor's Note podcast is brought to you by Deadpool's Demolition Company. When you need to break down all four walls, Deadpool's Demolition is who you call. Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast, Central Maine's best comic book store by default. My name is Zach, and with me is my co-host, local internet celebrity, Jared. Hello, Jared. Hi, Zach. <laughs> How are you? I'm great tonight. You're back. You're back from Philadelphia? You are not oh, Philadelphia, not Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Way north and west of Philadelphia. Where the Amish are? Uh, there's some Amish up in Warren County, yes. Because you were visiting your grandmother. I was visiting my grandmother. Uh, she's doing well. And I was taking care of your cat. You were. Uh, but you were handsomely rewarded for your efforts to drive to my house. I have your house key. Yeah, that's a frightening prospect, actually. I <laughs> I'm need not that. giving it back. You son of a gun. <laughs> it's mine now. Like, there's anything of value in my house anyway. Your house is nothing but extremely single guy stuff, except for this one really nice liquor cabinet. Oh, you like that? What? Where did you get that? Why oh, that's a good story one, about that. You have one nice piece of furniture. Did you see that it lights up? No. It lights up. It's now worse. I don't light it up all the time. But it's a glowing beacon in the dark for someone who wants to drink. What, for like the four empty beer bottles you have in there? there no, those were full and they're from each from a different country. Ooh. Yeah. You, uh, Mexico was represented. Uh, Canada. Congratulations. You and everyone with the dorm room has that out. What, the... I'm a man of the world. I drink a beer. It's like a passport in my liquor cabinet. Um, I mean, if your house is burning down, save that and nothing else. Oh, leave the cat. Isn't that save beautiful? That. Yeah, it's I'm not going to leave the cat and save the liquor cabinet. I'll save the cat and the liquor and then file a claim on the liquor cabinet. It's probably like worth five or $600. It's the one nice piece of furniture you own. What, my, my, uh, my recliner that my cat has tore holes in? No, that doesn't count. What about my TV? No. That's not really furniture. No. My bed is nice. I like my bed. No. Have you seen my bed? Yes. Have you laid in my bed? No. So you don't know how, how nice know. my bed is? I have not laid in I don't in know if like, you went like maybe kick back, relax at my house for a little bit. I wasn't worried about you taking the beer out of my fridge because it's all Bud Light. So yeah, thank you for checking on the cat. Had a good trip. Encountered an Amish guy at the gas station. All right, which is like I'm not like saying like they're like. Do the Amish believe in gas? Well, yes, actually, I was kind of concerned. It's I can't. I think it was Amish. It's either Amish or the Mennonites. One of the two can have like so many horse, like a like an engine of so much horsepower. If you're an expert on like you know Amish or Mennonites, please uh, let me know. No one is. But uh, <laughs> well, they are. I promise none of our listeners are because they're listening to a podcast. Well, I know, but still, there might be people that know the Amish culture. But anyway, he's paying with money, obviously, because he doesn't, you know, they don't use banks and they don't have credit cards. Or but there's a guy, there's people that, like, live near the Amish people and they will give them rides in vehicles to get from you know, place to place. Cause, you know, How do they pay? Well, they either pay with, like, money. Rules of the road? Uh, no, the, they don't. they don't believe in the book. <laughs> But no, they like will either pay like pay them money or they'll like will trade like services or goods like any of their like farm fresh mm-hmm. stuff. So he's inside the the quick fill station, which is right across from the uh, drive through beer dispensary, which I went and spent a great deal of money at. And he's in there giving this gentleman some money to pay for it, and he's just standing there, kind of smiling, and feels out of place. Nickelback is playing over the sound system, and I kid you not, he goes. You're going to have to excuse me, but this music does not agree with me. It just walks out. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Nickelback doesn't really agree with me either. So that's my that's my Pennsylvania story. Drove out, drove back. Oh, won some money at the casino. Driving back, my mom wanted to stop at this casino. So I'm like, oh, it's a great opportunity to get out and stretch legs. And But she like likes like the penny slots, or like the two-cent slots. So she's playing two or three lines at a time. She likes to play the penny at a time. I put what I had left. So like, you were three. just doing one or two lines at a time? She was. Well, she was. I, however, am a maximum lines kind of guy. So I put the three dollars in and I, I bet it all. And I meant below. I know what you meant. I'm pushing the show forward, uh, and won like uh, sixty some odd dollars on one. Who sixty? You know, as a man who runs his own business, actually sixty dollars. Yay! Yes, exactly. And then I came in and Jeez. gave you the quarter I owed you today. Yeah, you did. But I put it right into your uh, pinball machine where I have. I was gonna say, where did you put that? It's in the pin- it's in the uh, pinball machine safekeeping. As we do each and every week, we are going to get into the news. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Ow, the news. You're excited for the news. 
Because we have some news. And this doesn't involve Mar- uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which usually gets you upset. No, there's there's no Batman v Superman news. That also gets you upset. But we got some Superman news. Ah, yes. Right now, Warner Brothers has two unnamed films in development. One of them we know to be the solo Batman movie. But it came out yesterday that Man of Steel 2 is officially in development. So, Superman isn't dead. We knew that. Yeah, we already knew that. He's going to be in Justice League. So now the question is... <laughs> Man of Steel 2 subtitle, we're sorry. So, obviously, this tells us a couple things. All right, it kind of... Also, like, for me, kind of ruins some things, if you look forward. Superman's going to end up being okay. It'd be good at the end of Justice League if he's not just good from the get-go, which there was some, you know, thought about... He, he won't be. He, he's not going to show up until probably the end of Act 2, would be my guess. Yeah. But now we know that not only is Superman... Because there was some conjecture that Superman would be kind of, like, under the possession of, like... Steppenwolf or Dark Side or something. And have a mullet. And have a mullet. But now we, we know that no matter what happens in that movie, Superman is going to be okay and he's going to be back on the good side. Yeah, because he's a moneymaker. He's a straight up moneymaker. Because before last weekend, Warner Brothers didn't know what to do with, with anything but Batman or Superman. Now they know. And you know what? Honestly, that argument could still be made, but we'll get there. Yes. No word on if Zack Snyder's going to direct it or not, but. I imagine that this is going to be a very different Superman movie. We've had him in two movies so far. Neither one has been fresh. They've both been rotten to the core. Rotten Tomatoes has not been kind to any of the DC movies at all. Because they're on Marvel's payroll. And there are petitions to shut down Rotten Tomatoes, even though it's an aggregate site, and that doesn't make sense. There we go. Some of the... Typical Zack anger that we love on this show. Yeah, you want it, you got it. Oh, it's coming. Gonna, oh, I know that there's going to be a tremendous amount of surliness in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. It's coming. Don't you worry. Stay tuned for the anger. You know, it was really, um, I'm definitely get there, but someone came into the shop today. They're like, hey, I was watching Suicide Squad and I could hear you sighing in anger in my head. I'm reaching the audience. I'm touching them. I was watching Suicide Squad this <laughs> afternoon after I stopped by the shop. Oh, congratulations. One year anniversary for Editor's Note this week. Coming up on Friday. Um, they said they sale. could just feel me. Big it, sale coming up on that. We'll, well talk more about that. Sale's already happening. Well, going well. Going well. I like it. Excellent. Yeah, but I'm watching the movie, and I'm like, you were kind of seeping into the back of my head. There were some things I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> you can just hear me getting But then angry. at the same time, I'm like, they were trying to like... I want to enjoy the damn movie. There were some things I really enjoyed. But we're going to talk about it. We got news. News! We do. Mark Ruffalo has wrapped on Thor Ragnarok only a month into filming. So we're not getting a whole lot of Hulk? That's what people have been saying. They're like, oh, I bet he's wrapping early because he's just not going to be in human form a lot. But he's done mocap for the Hulk so far. So I just imagine we're just not getting a lot of the Hulk. But we're also thinking that we're going to have Planet Hulk, so... Yeah, we'll see what that's going to mean. Maybe um, maybe it's at the end, maybe it's part of the big climax, maybe I, it's part of the beginning opening. Who knows? I could see it being an Act 2 kind of deal. I don't think it'll be in the beginning, but I could see Thor meeting up with the Hulk in the middle of the movie. Maybe towards the end he could be an Act 2, Act 3 kind of deal. And we also don't know that maybe the call sheet was a straight month of Hulk stuff. Could have been. So they can get a jump start on the, on the motion capture and the, yeah. and the rendering and stuff. And there's still a lot of other principal photography, but they did all the Hulk stuff. We up know, front, the front load it so they had stuff to work with. Could be. And we know Tom Hiddleston is still shooting. He just started an Instagram, and his first post was him in the Loki gear. Not him and, uh, um, not Katy Perry, but... Um, no, not not Hiddle Swift. Hiddle Swift. Oh, yeah, Taylor Swift. There's no Hiddle Swift there. It's just him straight Loki. Oh. I would think his first Instagram picture would be him and Taylor Swift. You think she would have made that the case? There's yeah. some big... She's going to write a song about it. Like, my first Instagram or something. When they break up? Oh, Tom Hiddleston is going to get roasted. Did you see, by the way, people getting roasted? Drake challenged, they pretty much challenged Eminem to rap battle. I did not. That's not what we cover on this show. No, but I mean, I didn't know if you stayed up with like other current events of the, the Twitter sphere. That's why I'm a local yeah. internet celebrity. It's going to get real. I would love to see Eminem just destroy, absolutely destroy Drake. Think about anyone who's ever challenged Eminem. Look, I just heard the worst and, Eminem song in Suicide Squad. Oh, come on. It's the worst it's Eminem song. The, and I like Eminem. That is not the That's worst. It's the worst. No, it's not. There are worse Eminem songs. I, By the way, I know we'll get to it. If, if you're looking for like a big thing that I really liked about the movie, it's very weird that it, rare uh, that I have mixed feelings. The soundtrack was killer. The Warner Brothers did throw a lot of money. That like We're willing to pay 30 seconds for every song. 
And they paid a lot of money. Yeah, they did. There were a lot of songs. We'll get to that later. We got more news. Let's dive into Star Wars. Let's just feel around Star Wars. Let it cover us up and just give us all the Star surround Wars Surround you. It, it surrounds so us. So much Star Wars does it, news. Does it surround you and penetrate you and bind everything together? Definitely penetrates me. <laughs> Wrong with this one. This Thursday, we know for sure we are getting a new Star Wars Rogue One trailer. The last time I said we were getting a five-minute trailer, I was super wrong. You were super, super wrong. That's what I reported. I reported false news. It's not my fault, except it kind of is. Yeah, because you need to check your sources. However, we know that this is a fact because yeah, we there's a trailer for the trailer. Oh, I hate that so much. Trailers for trailers, Jesus. That's like those uh, exhibit memes, like from uh, Pit My Ride. Yo, I heard you like trailers, so I put a trailer in the trailer of the movie for you to trail on. Yeah, no, that was really but bad. Exhibit. We are getting Star Wars on Thursday. The show is coming out on Wednesday, so we will get it tomorrow. It's coming tomorrow, but for us, it's in two days because it's a Tuesday. Yeah, and it was, it's late on a Tuesday though. It's so by the time, I mean, I'm excited. Looks good. I mean, we see the droid. We get our first peek at the droid in the... We've uh, seen him a little bit more, but that was a little more It was a more of a on yeah, shot. Um, played by Alan Tudyk. He's done Steve Motion the Pirate. Capture before. He did do Steve the Pirate. He was the robot in iRobot with Will Smith. I love Will Smith. Yeah, we got all kinds of 90s Will Smith coming up. Love me some Fresh Prince. Also in Serenity and uh, Firefly. Yep. Uh, a little more Star Wars. We got a peek of a new ship, a U-Wing. So we're just continuing our letter fetish with the Rebel ships. Just like Jean-Luc Picard said, there are plenty of letters left in the alphabet. Yeah, no kidding. Looks fine. I guess there was a Rogue One trailer that leaked online. I never watched it. I never saw the pirated trailer. But I guess there is footage out there of the U-Wing in action. Was it from a Hall H? Uh, probably. Oh. Uh, a little bit more out of Rogue One. Senator Organa is going to be in Rogue One, so Leia's adoptive daddy. Is it going to be Jimmy Smith, Senator Organa? Yeah, it is. Organa? It's Jimmy Smith. Really? He's in it, yeah. That's kick-ass. He's going to be doing... I didn't bother writing down the actress in. Glad you remembered. There you go. Yeah, NYPD Blue, uh, Sons of Anarchy. What else was Jimmy Smith in? No idea. Aside from the... But he's in Rogue One. two and three. He's in Rogue One. I thought he was... I liked him um, as Senator Organa in the prequels. I wish that he had got more screen. I like Jimmy Smith. Oh, yeah, he was also in... Um, West Wing, the last couple of years, uh, episodes of the West Wing, uh, so, seasons. So now we know we're going to get Vader, we're going to get Senator Organa. Anyone else you want to see a cameo from? Uh, or even a role from? Because uh, he's just supposed to be a ca- He said he was only a cameo. But anyone you want to see in this movie? Anyone I want to see in this movie? This takes place before Luke leaves Tatooine. I want to some- see the Emperor. Uh, we see there's some Emperor? As, I don't know, but he could be a hologram. No, Wh- that was my Emperor. Oh, is it going to be... Um, I don't know if he's in there. I'm just saying he could be a potential one. What about uh, some Obi Wan? Because you and McGregor um, has said has expressed interest in in being Obi Wan. As long again. as it could be fit in organically, yeah, I'd love to see it. I think he was my favorite part of the prequels. Oh, you and McGregor crushed it, absolutely crushed it. But there is one more piece of Star Wars news. There have been talks of a live action Star Wars TV show going to ABC, home of that terrible last season of Scrubs and Agents of Shield. Boo! No! No! Stop it, Disney. Stop it now. I know you own ABC, but no. That, to me, is going to be product saturation to the extreme. Don't do it. As adamant, I don't want it. As adamant as I was last week about not having an Avengers, Marvel, Star Wars crossover, I'm just as adamant about not having a weekly Star Wars television show. Star Wars is special because it doesn't happen every day. Star Wars is special because week. they have money behind it. Star, Damn it. <laughs> Star Wars is special because you have like the effects. and good, We had the cartoon. We had Clone Wars. That was fine. But don't give me a live action every... No! Stop it! Stop the madness! Do you want to cry in a corner? Yes! You do. I mean, you're I'm passionate about this. I'm as passionate as I was about... And Star Star Wars Fan 87, I'm sorry I yelled at you last week for your stupid boneheaded idea, which now, you come to find out, Stan Lee is, even said it. So I can't really yell at Stan Lee, so I'm just going to yell at things. But no, too much of a good thing. Too much of a good thing. Don't you have a favorite pizza? If you eat your favorite pizza every day, you would not like that pizza anymore. You would ruin it. Why do you gotta be such a bitch? I'm. I, 
I don't know. I don't want. I don't want live action Star Wars TV. Last time there was live action Star Wars TV, it was Life Day. Think about how bad that went. Preview for our Christmas episode. Oh, you gonna make me watch that again? Oh, shut up! You knew it was on the schedule. You saw it. I did, and I'm still not happy about it. I, mean, I watched it once. I'm so excited for December. We're doing so many terrible Christmas episodes. Can we watch it together at least and like? It's only I have like to suffer together. Hour. Yeah, fine. We can watch B. Arthur and <laughs> Jefferson Airplane for some reason. Yeah, we'll get there. That's December. Life it's day. so far down in the Life schedule. Life day. Life day coming up. We'll get there. J.J. Abrams thinks that's canon. <sighs> J.J., please. I Be my gleaming hope. Help me, A.J. Abrams. You're my only hope. A.J.? Help me, J.J. Abrams. You're my only hope. <laughs> no. We'll get there. We won't get there until December, though. Oh, look forward to that. It's gonna be. I'm, a, I'm looking forward to December. I, I have know, so don't, many. Don't wish away summer, man. It's still the first week of August. I got a lot of holiday-themed episodes coming. Do we get to wear ugly sweaters? I do have a sweater that says Meowy Christmas, and it has cats playing with yarn. You should wear it during one of the podcasts. I did. We, I wore that when we did that ugly sweater laser tag party. No, but I'm saying wear it during one of the podcasts. No one will see that but you. Yeah, but You've still, seen me wear the Meowy Christmas. I know. I shot you while you were wearing it. <laughs> I'm not sure. It was a mercy killing. Because that sweater was ugly. I, I think I won that, at least. Um, It came out the... And this isn't really a big surprise, but this is probably going to be the last X-Men movie for Patrick Stewart. He's getting up there in age. and well, He said this is going to be a very different Xavier than what we've seen before. He said, it's probably his last, never say never, but this is probably it. Well, aren't we on a different timeline anyway? So I mean, you would have thought the last one was probably the last, so whatever. Bring on more Patrick Stewart. He's one of the tent poles. He's one of the good parts of the terrible X-Men movie series. So yeah, whatever. I love me some Sir Pat Stew. That's his Twitter handle. Is it? At, Stur- at Sir Pat Stew. He's a knight. He's Yeah, no, he is. He's just a generally pleasant individual. Oh, he's a great guy. Badass. I speak like I know him personally. Super young wife. Yes, but he's oh my his Twitter. If you seriously do yourself a favor and follow him, and then tell him that you follow him because of this show, and maybe we'll get Sir Patrick Stewart to come sit here in the basement lounge and be on our show. I have a couple of celebrities that follow my Twitter. Really? Who? A couple of them. Don't worry about it. Are like they real celebrities or like they're real celebrities? I. You need to tell me who's who follows. I have some comic book people and a couple of TV actors. Oh wow. Nice. I got. I think I have a TV actor. I had. Uh, I Jerry Remy follows me. Who? Jerry Remy. He's a baseball guy. He works for the Red Sox. Oh. Who else followed me for a while? Oh. Um, for a while. Yeah, it was uh, one of the guys who was in. Um, he was in a band. It was a, like a famous '90s band. I can't think of it. Oh, President of the United States. Yeah, he followed me for like millions of peaches. Yeah, followed peaches me for a hot for minute. Me. Millions of peaches. But I got guys like peaches I got, for me. I got Peaches school. come from a can. They, they were, were put there, there by a man in, in a factory downtown. downtown. <laughs> if I had my little way. That's enough. I'd eat peaches no. every day. Copyright infringement. I'm not getting into it. Is, is it really copyright infringement? Probably. We're not. I mean. Look, I know that we can't even like tweet about that big multicolor ring thing happening in that city that that cartoon movie was based off of. I think the movie's name was Rio. We can't tweet about that. There's also that. a song by Duran Duran. Yeah, no. That, Why can't we tweet about that? I don't know. They're big on like shutting down like people who aren't sponsors. Wow. Don't tweet. Don't tweet. Especially me. Like oh. as a business, don't tweet. I can tweet whatever the hell I want. I'm a I'm a I'm a single guy who lives with a cat and has Twitter. Ladies and Tinder. Uh yes. And uh my coach. Okay Cupid. Uh not so much. Okay, grinder. Okay, no, finder. No, 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 none of that. I've actually kind of just shied away from that for a little bit. Low profile. I don't need to be a local internet celebrity on the dating, the internet dating scene. I was at the shop today though, and people missed me. I should have like announced it. You were. You, you were like in a weird middle ground. Like I don't in between waves of people. Yeah, it's always funny. Like I'll be by myself, and then like everyone will come all at once. That's how it goes. I should seriously like just like tweet out that I'll be at the shop and see if anyone listens to the show like shows up and I'll sign autographs. Well, most of them have jobs and don't want your autograph. Well, I mean, like on a Saturday. That's fair. Um, it could be a special guest signing. But we got one last bit of news, and oh, it is sexy time news. Okay. 
Luke Cage trailer. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Luke Cage. So we have gotten Luke Cage in the Jessica Jones show. We got, uh, Wasn't he in Mortal Kombat? No, that was... Johnny Cage. Johnny yeah. Cage. I'm sorry. Yes, Johnny. Wasn't he like a... He's like a movie actor. Yeah, something like that. In the bad, like, really crappy movie. Now, we got Luke Cage. He was featured previously in the Jessica Jones show. Fantastically played by Mike Coulter. We got our first, we got a teaser trailer before, but this is our first full-blown trailer. And my God. He messes people up. Oh, it looks so good. We got an Origin of Luke Cage episode coming. I'll break down who he is, how he is, where he is, when he is. He's bulletproof. He is. He has bulletproof skin. That's one of his deals. That's good for him. That seems like a really marketable thing to have. He is another victim of people trying to duplicate the super soldier program that gave Steve Rogers his powers. Created the Hulk. Yep. Well, in the Marvel movies, yeah. But, yeah, Luke Cage is a result of that. He was imprisoned for a crime he did not commit. And then they tried to do super soldier things to him. He got bulletproof skin, enhanced strength. And now he just wants to protect his city. New York He's down in Harlem. He threw a guy through a wall. Oh my god, it looks amazing. So, we have Rosario Dawson back in this show. She has been our connective tissue between all the Netflix shows. She was in both seasons of Daredevil. She was in Jessica Jones. And now she's going to be in Luke Cage. We see him, first thing out of the gate, we see him saving Rosario. And she's amazing, isn't God, I like Rosario Dawson. Yes. She's good at everything. You know who else I like? Like, similar to her, um... Oh, wait a minute. I had the name. I lost it. She was in Sons of Anarchy. She was really good. She played um, the district attorney. I didn't watch enough of it to tell you. Let me fact check the show and I'll get back to you on her name. But we know we see uh, the Luke Cage origin of him. And I've read articles. He is definitely going to be wrongly imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit. But we do see him in his classic 1970s Luke Cage outfit. He's got his tiara. He's got his wristbands. It's probably not going to be around a lot, but... My God, we got a Luke Cage tiara. That's amazing. I don't know if I would call it a tiara. It's I mean, a straight tiara. What do you mean a straight tiara? Like It's nothing but a tiara. Okay. Well, I mean, I thought tiara was like the point went up. It's more like a crown. I'd call it a crown. It's a tiara. Okay. Fine. I'm call sure he's tiara. not going to have it for the whole show, but it was nice having that little callback to it. Something we do see, we see a newspaper being passed around. It says Black Panther Party on it. I wonder if it's going to connect it all to Black Panther that we saw in Civil War. Skype's available. Oh, wow. Good for Skype. I wonder if we could get somebody to Skype into the show. Well, it's not. Okay. But the Black Panther in comics does predate Black Panther in the political sense. So I'm curious if we're going to see any crossover there. Because it is seen within the trailer. We also get Marvel kind of D-list character, Misty Knight, who is, in her own right, a very interesting character. She is a super heroine. Her arm gets taken off and gets replaced in the future with a cybernetic arm. I'm curious to see where Misty Knight's going to go. She's also a big romantic interest of Iron Fist, who is going to be the Netflix show following Luke Cage. You look like you want to say something? Oh, it's, it's CCH Pounder is the woman who is in um, Sons of Anarchy. Which, by the way, it does tie back into the show, because she was... Um, she was the voice of, in Batman uh, Arkham Origins Blackgate, the other Arkham Asylum game, she was the voice of Amanda Waller. Uh, was it Wallace? Waller. Waller. Amanda Waller. So she was the voice of Amanda Waller. She was in that movie you just watched earlier today. She was in that movie? Yes! That was CCH Pounder. Oh, no, no, I thought you meant CCH Pounder. Amanda Waller, I know, was in the movie, but yeah. it was not CCH Pounder playing Amanda no. Waller. Which we'll talk about her and how badass she was. But the thing about Luke Cage, and it looks like we're going to be going that direction... We see a news crew at the end of the trailer going to talk to him, like, at least tell us your name. Luke Cage and Iron Fist, they had this combo going a ways back. They were under Heroes for Hire. These are superheroes. They're like mercenaries, but good mercenaries. Like soldiers of fortune. Kind of, yeah. Like the A-Team. Yes, this is Only the with superpowers. Yes. ba 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 Copyright. Copyright. I put it in the Said that first in Rocky Three. Yes. Correct. I know I'm right. But it looks like we might be getting Heroes for Hire. Um, Jessica Jones and Daredevil, we did not really get public superheroes, so we might be seeing the Heroes for Hire kind of stuff, which excites me. Something different. I like different. We need something different. And this show looks a little more fun. Jessica Jones especially. Oh my god, that's an insanely dark show. 
Daredevil's Fairly Dark. This one looks like it might be a little more fun. The Flash. Well, that's not on Netflix. Oh, it's on Marvel. CH. Yeah, uh, CW. Yeah, yeah, it's DC. Ah. Uh, but this one looks like it might be a little more fun. And, God, I love Daredevil. And I love Jessica Jones. But this one looks like it might go on a little bit of a lighter side. Because those two shows, boy, are they dark. It kind of, but, you know, some of the trailer, though, it did feel like it was it had some Daredevil elements to it. Yeah, because it has a hallway fight. And Daredevil loves hallway fights. But it's also like, you know, you know, inner city New York. Guy has powers. Hell's Kitchen. We gotta protect Hell's Kitchen. We are there for the city. Now we're protecting Harlem. We are street level. Yeah, they are. But it just feels... It has that feel to me. But that's just me. Who knows? I don't. We'll see. The Shadow, he knows. It looks sexy. I actually was kind of uh, mildly excited for it when I saw the trailer when you showed me. But that will do it for the news for this week. That's all we got. We are moving on to our main topic of the week. The deep... C Extended Universe third movie Suicide Squad. Let's get into a review. I'm the best there is at what I do. But what I do best isn't very nice. It's time for an editor's note podcast review. I like that that the the review uh theme that we have. I like it. Yeah, I like most of our themes. Yeah, they're they're I, solid. I shouldn't say most. Like thanks. It's it's Mad a Titan Productions. It's a well produced part of the show. Find him on Twitter at Mad Titan Productions, or just follow me on Twitter and then see that I tweet at him, or just look up hashtag Edheads. Yeah, I do like that. There's a hashtag. We have a hashtag. We have a hashtag. We have followers, rate, subscribe, review, all that good stuff. We're gonna review and rate Suicide Squad. Boy, are we! So you can, I can hear the gravelly sadness in your voice. Luke Cage had you all excited and pumped up, and now you're just like sitting in the bar by yourself because the girl's like, "Oh, yeah, I gotta go to the bathroom," and then she walked away and then didn't come back. God, I feel like that's a very specific example from your life. But I want to take you through a journey. I'll take you through my journey of Suicide Squad. Yes. So, so we get all these trailers. I love the marketing for this movie. I really like the director. He's only done a couple of movies, but I've enjoyed what he's done. He did that, um, didn't he do, um, Fury? He, yep, he did End of Watch, he did Fury, I really liked Fury, and Fury surprised me because I like Shia LaBeouf, and I hate Shia LaBeouf, and I like Shia LaBeouf in that movie. Can you list the things you like on two hands? I'm sure I could. But this is not the show, no, we're, like, you seem, you seem rather surly. <laughs> everyone needs just, this is a kind of a dress in black situation. Oh, you are what you are. In memoriam of DC. That you you wow that bad in your mind? Well, I love the marketing for it, and I like David Ayer. And then the reviews happen. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. But then I talk to some people in the shop. Some people are new, but generally I'm talking to comic book people, and comic book people seem to be into it. So that gives me a sliver of hope. I'm like, all right, maybe this will be something that I enjoy. I like comic book stuff. I know the Suicide Squad. Maybe this will be good. You know, this is. More of a personal thing, but I go into the movie. I'm sitting next to a guy who smells like five-day-old cigarettes. This is not me. I went by myself. Yeah, no, this is a guy who smells like he just bought a red light special off of someone who was working a double. So that kind of put me off. Do you think he was... Is he... Is it more like tobacco or vape? I think it was tobacco. Okay. So I was a little put off going into the movie, not related to the movie itself, and then it opens. And we're going to this non-spoilers. We'll get into spoilers later on. But overall, and I'll just put it out up front, I don't like this movie. I don't. There's parts of it that are pitch perfect. There are moments that I love. There are things that I couldn't ask for anything more. But as a whole, this movie is a structural mess. This movie is a wet dream for everyone who has a friends and family discount at Hot Topic. And I hate it. Hold on. My phone is vibrating. It's somebody that's saying, wow, I'm surprised Zach didn't like a movie. I want it to be good. I didn't. Okay. So when I go, ah, I'm not in 100% dissension with you. I felt like it kind of, I don't know, it felt very, very video game like. I thought there were some really great visuals. I freaking loved Will Smith in this movie. I thought he was outstanding. Um, I'm sorry, did you like Will Smith or did you like the character that he was playing? Because I just saw Will Smith. I saw 90s Will Smith, which I don't mind seeing, but he was just 90s Will Smith. But again, I come from the... 90s Will Smith? Well, no, I come from the avenue of... I don't know who the hell Deadshot is. 
So I, I liked it. I thought I liked him. I thought he really helped carry the movie. Uh, as did um, Margot Robbie's Margot mess. Robbie. Uh, well, that didn't hurt. But I thought she was. I liked her as Harley Quinn. I thought that those two really kind of carried the movie. I don't know. It felt like a video game. Like you got to go. It, it was very formulaic. Put the team together. This is the thing we got to do, and then we do the thing, and then that's like you know. So I, something I want to do is I want to go into this review positively. I want to say the things I enjoyed. See, like I'm like more of a like leave on a positive note. No, nope. I feel like you should like tear it down and then build it back up a little bit. No, I do the opposite of a compliment sandwich. I start negative, go positive, and then negative. Oh wow, you suck. But these things were good. But ultimately, you suck. Yeah. Cinematically, this is the best Batman movie I have ever seen. Batman wasn't even in no. That minutes. is the best Batman. I have never seen a better Batman movie than what we saw in this. I loved Ben Affleck in this movie. Can you rephrase it as like the best Batman I've seen in a movie? Or it's not a Batman movie. No, it's the best cinematic Batman ever put on screen. Okay, so hands like, down. So nothing rephrase else it a little bit because you make it sound like you think this is a Batman movie. Batman plays a role in it. I liked Batman. And it is the best Batman has ever been. Okay. There. That's better. It's not a Batman movie. You should say the best Batman has been in a movie. I love that he just shows up. He doesn't say a lot. He takes down Deadshot. And just that line of like, it's over Deadshot. I don't want to do this in front of your daughter. That is so Batman. And then him taking down Harley the way he does it. It's so Batman. Everything he does is so Batman. He's not murdery. That was nice. No, he didn't kill anybody. I know. What a nice change to this universe. Yes, but this is all after the whole Superman thing, so... Uh, after he, that's a little unclear, but yeah, there's, it might be. It probably is. Uh, uh, maybe there's some overlap. It doesn't really matter. It's probably within that same realm. But. Because right away, the movie acknowledges that this is this is happening after Superman dies. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. I didn't expect that right out of the gate to get like a reference right away. The first thing is like, oh yeah, Superman's dead. So if you hadn't gone to this, I know we got to see like flashbacks of Man of Steel. Oh, I'm sorry, Dawn of Justice. I'm like, no, it's ah, everywhere. No! Don't show me that movie. But I loved Batman in this movie. This is a minor spoiler, but it hit the internet so hard. I'm not going to really worry about it. We get to see the Flash put away Captain Boomerang, and that's a big deal because Captain Boomerang goes under one of the rogues for the Flash, and I loved that. That was so good. That was perfect. Having a we got one of the rogues in this movie, and the Flash is the one that put him away. I'm like, yes, absolutely. That is amazing. Viola Davis is Amanda Waller. Pitch perfect. She oh. is a powerhouse. She is fantastic. She is evil. Like, she's badass. Oh, my God. She is so cold. Oh, not even when we get to the spoilers, we'll talk about how cold she was. Jeez, she is. Frozen. Frigid. That's like Maine in January cold. She is... Pitch perfect as Amanda Waller. I loved her. We got some references to the DC Universe. We see one of uh, the building that they have to go in is the John Ostrander building. John Ostrander, the guy who made the Suicide Squad popular in the 80s as the writer. I really liked that little nod. What did you think um, of the Joker? We'll get there. I think that's more of a spoiler conversation. But I mean, overall. Um... <sighs> 50-50. You're 50-50 on him? This movie is a momentous occasion, though. This is the first movie where Jai Courtney isn't a damn charisma vacuum to everyone around him. Probably because he's barely in it. Well, okay. He's the worst. And in this movie, I liked him. That's never happened. This is very rare that you like anything, it seems. Look, look at him in the fifth Die Hard movie. Look at him in the fifth Terminator movie. Get him away from the fifth movie of anything, apparently, because he's the worst. The fact that you're watching a fifth movie of most things. Yeah. Did you see Die Hard 5? Uh, was that the one where they're in Russia? Yes. No. Good. Saving me good, some time. Good choice. Good life choice. I've been known to make a semi-occasional good life choice. What did you think of um, the, the opening exposition where they kind of like list off the Suicide Squad members and kind of like, uh, I thought it was clunky, but I like some of the backstory stuff. I understand the point of it, but at the same time, it was all a little brief. Ultimately, I think it probably, I understand the purpose of it, but I think it probably hurt the movie. Because going into this movie, the big problem is is we didn't get enough time with these characters to care about them. Even though I know these characters as a comic book fan, I still didn't feel invested in them in the movie. And when I don't feel invested in characters who are our leads, who then spend 
about 60% of the movie fighting nameless and faceless villains, I don't care at all. What did you think about them, like, putting, like, the graphics and words up on the screen? That's like, fine. If you needed, like, the help. I mean, the whole thing. I, show, don't tell. The whole thing probably should have been redone in maybe just with an extra two minutes on everyone. I mean, that getting they, a little more on every character. They I really glossed over, like... I didn't feel invested in anyone. They hit hard on Deadshot, and they hit hard on Harley Quinn, and they kind of, like, hit a little bit on Diablo. Oh, yeah, nothing about Killer Croc, uh, or, you know, a little bit about Captain Boomerang, but there's, like, it's like they, they set out who the big three were going to be in this movie, the big two, the big three. Did you like that um, big knowledge with Harley Quinn's information splashed across the screen that she was part of Robin's death? Yeah, that's interesting. I was going to talk about that in spoilers, but if you brought it up, I guess we can do well, it. Well, we if you it's are paying that, attention, Robin Robin died. Well, not in this movie, but we primary. see that in Batman v Superman that there is a dead Robin, likely the second Robin, Jason Todd. If we're going with comic history, and it says that Harley is an accomplice in that, which is different from the comics. Jason Todd died years before Harley was even introduced as a character, so we'll see where that goes. They're definitely playing up Robin in these movies. Or especially Jason Todd, which leads me to believe that probably the solo Batman movie is going to be about his return, but we'll see. There is a scene I really liked with Harley. They recreated a very famous... Oh, the One Piece. And yeah. The, yeah, where she's dancing with the Joker. Yeah, this is an, I even recognize that. This is an Alex Ross cover that they recreated. Alex Ross is about the greatest... I shouldn't say about... Alex Ross is the greatest cover artist of all time, where he does these super realistic photos and i saw there's a lot of joker he has a ton of costumes they do a lot of comic book recreation with the joker and that was probably my favorite I'm like oh my god that's the alex ross painting i know that it was a really cool moment that being said have is, i is that the end of your positives have i covered the things that i like probably for the spoiler free section probably probably in general uh, i think i've covered everything i liked did you like the length it was two hours so it's normal i guess yeah um, Are we entering the portion of the spoiler-free review where you get surly? I don't think... It's not surly. It's just... Disappointed, and that's worse. This movie, before I saw it, I talked to people. I'm like, even if this is a bad movie, this is the last movie that's really a flailing attempt at people with no direction. After this movie, Jeff Johns is going to be like Marvel's Kevin Feige. He's going to be taking over, steering the ship. So I still have hope for the future. But this one by itself is garbage. And we've just watched this like terrible cr- progression of movies. Man of Steel is like watching someone trip over their own feet. Dawn of Justice is like watching that same person face plant. And this movie is like watching them skid across the ground for five feet while eating gravel. Do you think that like with the early set of directors and the early framework, it was like, all right, here's the starting point. Here's the ending point. Just get us from A to B, and we'll be happy with that. I don't think there was any plan up until this point. I think the plan is going to start with Wonder Woman. The Wonder Woman will be the start of whatever plan DC has. In what movie franchise in history have we ever allowed three strikes before we go, next one will probably be good? It's going to be the first superhero movie that stars a woman that's like based on a girl. And that's it's like not a- true. People keep saying that, but even in the 80s, we got Helen Slater in the Supergirl movie, which is garbage. We got Halle Berry and Catwoman, okay, which is also enough. garbage. We got so Jennifer Garner and Electra, which is also garbage. <laughs> it's garbage day. It's <laughs> anybody. Female superhero led movies have happened before. They've all been awful. But they've really, really, really been playing up the metahumans angle. Wonder Woman does look really good, and I'm looking forward to that movie. I'm looking forward to it so much. I was also looking forward to Suicide Squad. So we'll see what happens. What about, I mean, in Justice League, the trailer looks pretty Justice good. Justice League I'm looking forward to. I think it looks fun. I want it to be good. I want these movies to be good. See, I'm of a different opinion. I I didn't hate the movie. I agree there were some structural things about it that were just like, huh. And there was like, it felt like we got to put all these pieces together and we got to do this and we got to do that. And we only have like two hours to do it. And it was like, this is... <sighs> This is like a D minus on the Guardians of the Galaxy scale. Like they wanted to do something like that and couldn't. Oh, dude, 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 dude! You can't like. Comp- that's like apples and oranges, though, because you like love, 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 love Guardians of the Galaxy, which I still have at my house. I'm surprised you didn't pick it up off my I did. coffee table. I took it home. You did? It's over there now. Yeah. Oh. Because I walked in and I saw my stuff. I'm like, I'm taking that back. Well, I mean, 
I've only had it for like two months. Yeah, no kidding. This movie, um, it does the thing that really... Anything else you steal out of my house? Just my own things. Okay. <laughs> the thing that pulls me out of a movie the fastest, more than anything else, is bad editing. It jerks you around, or and it this... doesn't move the story along. And even for me, because I know that I moan and bitch about things not making sense, which in all fairness, I'm not going to apologize for. No, but, you do you, man. But this is the kind of movie where a character would be standing... Let's just give a visual picture in an empty room. Now picture a couple characters in there. Put one character standing in the left corner of the room. Now go to the next shot, and they're suddenly sitting in the right corner of the room. And this movie does that a ton of times, and it pulls me out of it so fast. I'm just going, how the hell did they get from there to there Like bad in a millisecond? Yeah, it pulls me out so fast. Was it just me, or was there like... One scene where Deadshot's walking and he looks like he's not wearing a shirt and he's got tattoos. And the next scene he's got his shirt back on again. Maybe it was just me. I didn't catch that, but... Not or, that I happened. mean, Harley's holding the mallet at one point and then the next scene she's holding the bat. I think that was just her switching out what she had in that box. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. This is a movie that though you could, in some cases, see the reshoots based on the length of people's hair. Rick Flagg had like three different hair lengths. In a movie that's supposed to take place in about a week. Isn't there also people that are in charge of continuity? Yeah, not good. Like, that's a that's a job. People take pictures, and they have to match the pictures up with whatever happened. So, with continuity. He was the worst. There was a couple I saw, like, Jai Cordy had different mullet chop lengths, but Rick Flagg was the worst. I'm like, man, he has a lot of varying hairstyles in this one movie. It was a long night in Central City. Yeah, Midway. Midway City. Midway yeah. Central. Whatever. Yeah, a lot of... You mean Chicago? <laughs> a lot of different hairstyles for Rick Flagg in this movie. It's definitely Chicago based on the map. I think a new segment we should add to the show, because we're doing like a lot of comic book movies, should be, does this movie drop the ball in the third act? Because we could do that for basically every movie. Be a quick segment like yes or no. Mm. This one is a yes. They drop the ball in the third act. Yeah, I mean... Granted, they dropped it a lot earlier than that, but still. There were a couple of really good fight scenes. I thought there was some good fight and some good action scenes. I didn't scenes. care about the fight scenes at all, because it was all fight scenes against literally faceless characters with main characters who I wasn't invested in. Avengers. I was invested in all of those. Yeah, but the 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 nameless, faceless people that they're fighting, or... Uh, that was fine. Doing the Avengers third act... That was nothing but a victory lap. That was a fireworks show saying, look what we've accomplished. I'm just throwing your argument back in your face in that they were nameless, faceless Chitauri. No, they at least had faces. Okay, but, I mean, they're all the same. What about Ultron? They're all the same Ultron. Which I could... No, I can complain about that one, but... You can complain about whatever you want. First Amendment, dude. But when the first Avengers did it, that was a victory lap. That whole fight scene was about, look at what we've done. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. That fight scene is phenomenal. I love it. But, I mean, if you're going to use the argument that the people that are getting killed are nameless, faceless, I mean, but think, okay. What, what are the big the, issues with this? The Borg. What about the Borg? Just saying. But these, we, if you, I mean, pay attention, the Enchantress is changing the people into these things. I wish we had a longer scene. Our main villain, who, side note, I was right about. You were right about a couple of things in this movie. Which we'll get to in the spoiler section. Slipknot dies in five minutes. Oh, God, yeah. That was <laughs> oh, my God, he dies immediately. <laughs> um, they show Enchantress, like, kissing people to turn them into their villains, but there's, like, a few hundred of them. I just wish we had, like, a ten-minute scene of her making out with everyone. <laughs> that would have been far more entertaining. That's a really strong opinion about this movie. <laughs> I think it would have been funny just to... Did you like Enchantress? No. She... I thought... Um, that's... Well... I like, That's not 100% true. I like some of the somatic like stuff they did with her. When the first time... Um, the transformation. The transformation where the hand comes up, grabs her, and that, turns her over. I that was sweet. That. that was great. I, I wish there really was like, like more of that stuff. The movie itself, I didn't care about the characters. We'll get into their motivations in a minute. Because I can literally break it down character by character. I'll probably want to do that. The motivations didn't make sense from scene to scene. The third act is a How? mess. This is like the fourth movie. In a, and I'm sure there might even be more of... There's a blue light in the sky, and they need to stop it in a comic book movie. It's getting old. It's awful. This movie is... How quickly did they did they change their minds? They're like, early on, they're like, we're going to kill these guys and escape. And then they're like, oh, wait, we're going to help them. Like, they did a quick 180. <sighs> like, within, like, 45 seconds. 
Which I, I mean, that's probably more spoiler section. But yeah, because we'll get into another. There's a big things. flip early in the movie. Well, not early, like early in the team part of the movie. Um, I think we yeah, we'll probably do that for spoilers. Just go character by character. We'll just do a quick breakdown and then do all that. But overall, this is mildly better than Batman v Superman. Uh, I guess it's still bad. Overall, I as a comic book fan, I really want there to be good DC movies. And let's just go with like what Newton's first law. Something in motion is going to stay in motion. This is still going to be in motion. Things have already happened. Things are happening. Unless and I acted want, upon by an outside force. But I want everything else to be good. I want Wonder Woman to be good. I want Justice League to be good. This is the third strike, and it's bad. But even so, I really hope and pray that the rest of these movies will be good. So I will rate this movie on our patented system of seen in theaters, red box hit, or... What are you doing with your life? Yeah, I'm going to give it a red box. I'm going to give it a see it in theaters. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt because we're starting to get some direction. It's starting to pull itself in. I think it's a victim of, by the time the movie was well in development, the script was written, things were moving forward, that direction started to, to come around. I think it sets the table for them to redeem themselves with a better movie with the Suicide Squad further down the road. I think ultimately we're probably going to end up getting Justice League versus Suicide Squad. Um, I doubt it. but Well, well Justice League is going to take on Steppenwolf first. Yeah. And Dark Side. And then probably Dark Side in part two, but But I think we're get, we're we're setting up for a kind of a showdown. You know, there are a couple of there are a couple of things that they did in it that were like, Yeah, that's not gonna hold up because we know that this person is way, way too valuable to the franchise to do that to them at this point. So I mean there were some obvious things that didn't hold up, but I feel like like you said, it it's it's better than Batman v Superman. I think it gets it closer to having direction. And there's some really fun parts of this movie. As a, a as a person who's not a comic book aficionado who doesn't know the inside and out, I was entertained. It was fun. I had fun with it. And I think people would have fun with it. It, it definitely. I'd like to know more about Harley Quinn. I'd like to know more about Deadshot. It kind of it it's it did its job in piquing my interest because ultimately this is about selling comic books for for. DC. It's about generating interest. It's about helping you. I mean, it, the hype has done a little bit for me, but let's get into spoilers. Look out! There's spoilers ahead! Spoilers. Zach didn't like the movie. Yeah, spoiler. Let's start off with our biggest spoiler. Slipknot! Three lines, then he's dead. Yes, he reminded me. His of, motivation dead. He reminded me of the guy in. I called it. I called it so early. But he reminded me of uh, the guy in Predator, the first guy to die. One Jesse of the first Ventura? Guys. No, Jesse Ventura's not the first one to die. He does fairly. Oh, early. Was, yeah, but no, the the Indian guy. He was just. I love um something that bummed me out, and I really wanted to see more of him. Which again is the first Captain Boomerang. I liked. I liked Jack Courtney in this movie. Yeah. It was he was just drunk. I like how everyone was like getting their gear together and somehow he has beer in his case. Yeah, that was cool. They just threw some beer in there. But what they didn't do, which I wanted to see more of, they didn't do enough trick boomerangs. They had an exploding boomerang, a camera boomerang, and a regular boomerang, and that's it. Yeah, there wasn't like a whole Give me a plethora of trick boomerangs. But again, was this supposed to be about Captain Boomerang? Was that who they were hinging everything on? They were hinging it on two Two and a half people. Yeah. They were hinting this movie by two and a half people. And I hate to put the Joker as half a person, but his role in the movie wasn't very large. But this movie surrounded Deadshot and Harley Quinn. Yeah. They, That's what this movie those was Those were the only two characters they even did pre-credit sequence. Yes. And those are probably... Deadshot is so 90s Will Smith. I haven't seen 90s Will Smith in a while. He's back, baby. 90s oh, Will Smith is back. Yeah, he was He's straight the- up... Straight Christ, up. I'm Bad surprised he didn't meets. wrap his way out of the ending. Oh, I thought he did the rap in Post the credits, credit, but that wasn't yeah. him. That was um, Common, I think. Who was in there for five seconds. Yeah, and gets his ass handed to him by the Joker. Yeah. No, that was like Independence Day meets Bad Boys meets Wow Wow West Will Smith with some edge. Will Smith is probably the best part of this movie. I will give Deadshot credit. He's the only character I... Bought the motivation for Will. He has. Um, I'm just gonna call him Will Smith. I'm not gonna call him Deadshot. Oh come on, no, call him Deadshot. I'm gonna call him Floyd then. Okay, Floyd Latin. Compromise. 
he's the only character who I bought the motivation for. He has a daughter that he wants to do right by, and I bought that. Yeah, like the scene where on the they're on the rooftop when um, Harley Quinn looks like she's escaping. He shoots her. Well, or he yeah. pretends to shoot pretends her. Pretends to shoot her, but like that whole like you know, oh, you work for contracts, your freedom and your daughter's education. If you kill Harley Quinn right now, like, oh, she's dead. Yeah. But here's the weird thing, and I didn't bring this up in the um, non-spoiler stuff. Early on, we have a prison guard who shows that he is a dick to everyone. Yes. And he, we even say, Harley says he's going to get his comeuppance by the Joker, and nothing. Not yet. No, nothing. There's not going to be a direct, there's not going to be an extended cut of this. Well, no, I mean like in future movies? No, just in general, that was definitely something they cut, and that was bad. Oh, they were gonna. The Joker was gonna mess him up. Yeah, they definitely set that up and never followed through on it. There was a well, I knew that they had kind of set it up, but he also the Joker uses him to get a cell phone to Harley to help her. Yeah, and, and then she's him. like, "Oh, you're gonna get it." He's like, "What do you mean, Harley? What do you mean?" And by the end of the movie, I'm like, "Yes, Harley, what did you mean?" Yeah, because nothing happened there to get rid of this guard who was awful to every member of the Suicide Squad. Yes, he was. He was very sleazy. Um, Deadshot, I did buy. I generally liked Will Smith in this movie. I wish we had more trick shots. That's part of Deadshot's whole deal. We only got one. And it was in his prequel scene, like his pre credit it wasn't pre credits, but his like background scene. Yeah. So Which I like where he's, you know, working the guy for two million dollars to kill the guy. I and I want to get into so I mean he's like Jared said, he is kind of one of our two big centers of the movie. And I want to swing back around to the big ones later on. So Slipknot dies, I called it. That was quick. Captain Boomerang, I don't buy his motivation at all. There's a point in the movie where they can all go free. And he disappears, which is hilarious. But then 30 seconds later, he just sidles back up and there's nothing. I don't buy that. There could have just been a scene of him going like, ah, screw it. And then what else am I going to do? But there was nothing. Yeah. He just, like, leaves, it's funny, and then he shows up again, like, why? There's what? no reason. Yeah, I mean, after they destroyed the device that would cause their heads to explode. Yeah, there's no reason for him to come yeah, back. Yeah, there's no nothing. nothing. There's no motivation nothing. for Captain Boomerang. Killer Croc, I have always considered to be one of the worst Batman villains. And in this movie, he's one of the worst characters. There's nothing he's the group. Him. He's the Groot of the movie. If you look at like Guardians of the Galaxy, he's the Groot. No, except Groot has heart, and this one just likes BET. But I mean, like he, but no, he like and Groot has a weird him. waddle into the water. Very limited words and kind of just there. Although Groot, I guess Groot played more of a, a role. Yeah, absolutely. Groot had heart. This guy, Killer Croc, has nothing. He's kind we of are a man Groot. character. And he didn't really do anything in this movie aside from waddle weird. Yeah, he really did, didn't do a thing. He was there. Katana, who I forgot to mention in our Who is the Suicide Squad episode. Yeah. I liked her. Um, she's very Katana-y. I like... But she didn't feel very tacked on. Yes. But she's kind of like... Um, isn't she kind of like a... She's like a, the Robin of the Suicide Squad. She's not like a bad person, though. She's just, she has been a Robin in the past. In Batman animated series, they have had Katana as kind of Batman's Robin. She's very much stands in a gray area in the DC universe. And I, I like seeing her. I like the mask. I like the spirit sword or the, the soul sword. We, in, in the trailer, we saw more of the soul sword. That is something that this movie had. There was a lot of stuff we saw in the trailers that did not happen in this movie. Yes, there were a lot of... The whole bar scene, like, what are you going to have to drink? Yeah. We saw straws of the Joker that were cut. We saw a Katana stuff There was, was a ton cut. of Joker stuff that was cut. Um, who else do we have in there before we get to... I guess we're kind of up to the biggies. El Diablo. Ah, Diablo. I loved him. He was so good. Oh, he was good. You bought his motivation. You bought what he was about. Talk. He is... A zealist character in the DC universe, and he sold this movie. He's also a deadless character now in the movies. Yeah, he is dead, but man. I didn't expect him to transform into that big thing. No, that was amazing. Yeah, I didn't I see, didn't that, see coming that coming either. at all. And that was, oh my god. So he was like, along with like the Enchantress and her brother, he's like one of those types of meta people. Yeah, like man, was. I liked him a lot. I liked his motivation. To a point, and I will touch on that in a minute. Let's talk about Harley. Yes. We already mentioned that Harley supposedly was an accomplice in killing Jason Todd. There has been a fairly vocal outcry of people saying that she, her character is glorifying abusive relationships. See, I didn't, 
get that. That wasn't my read. I thought it was more tragic. She was oh, yeah, someone she who gives up her doctorate. She gave up her future. People died because of her obsession. I didn't see this as a glorification of abusive relationships. No, because I think you also see the Joker in this cares about her. Like, he wants to be around her. Like, he cares for her, which is very un-Joker-like, from what I understand of the Joker. Yeah, the Joker who apparently is not in on the joke, which is kind of his whole deal. But, I don't know, I... I liked Margot Robbie in this role. There's a few times where she has to deliver Harley catchphrases where you could almost see her kind of gritting her teeth like, Puddin', uh, Mr. J, I have to say this. Ah, uh, damn it. I didn't get that from her, but I didn't. I don't really know the Harley catchphrases. I liked a lot of her stuff with the Joker, though. Like, when they're in the car and Batman jumps out of the car and he's like, you're in ruining date night! And she shoots Well, up. did I say it earlier? I love that, like, Joker's like, ah, I'm gonna peace out, Batman's here. Yeah. He just disappears, like, Batman, I'm out! Yeah. Leaves Harley Quinn just hanging out the front of a, the windshield of the car. I thought it was kind of sad, her relationship with the Joker. I didn't see it as glorifying anything. No, I mean, you could tell she's all about the Joker, but part of the problem with this movie is supposedly this uh, script was pumped out in six weeks, and it kind of shows. A lot of stuff happened quick. There were some good lines in it. I, I did like some of the Joker stuff, like the scene when they're in Ace Chemicals, which was cool that they put in Ace Chemicals instead of calling it Axis Chemicals like the Tim Burton Batmans did. Yeah, baby, we're in Alan Moreland now. Um, next week. But where he's like, would you die for me? And she's like, yes. He's like, oh, that's too easy. Would you live for me? This Joker didn't seem to have... Fun, though. And that's kind of the point of the Joker, is that he's in on the joke of just the world is a random, ridiculous place, and kind of backing any horse in it is a waste. But his main goal in this was to get Harley back. Yeah, and I love um, part of the Joker that I like in this, and part of what I dislike about other Jokers, is I like how ostentatious he is. Like, he puts effort into his brand and you just know there's like behind the scenes stuff he's like i'm gonna have riot gear that says joker on it so if someone needs to make that happen yes i like when they when his henchmen are going places and they all got the different like strange masks and one of them is wearing a batman mask and there's like a goat in there all this weird stuff yeah like this is a joker who plans his image and it was clear and i kind of liked that i thought he definitely was fun, but he was certainly a subplot and it felt like there were times it felt like you know Wiley Coyote trying to catch the Roadrunner. Well, Jared Leto, he did a ton of prep for this, and there were like six months, like everyone on set, like, oh, he never broke character. This was like total method acting. He watched hundreds of hours of YouTube videos of violence, just showing that not all violence is random and chaotic, but it can be methodical and calm. And he was doing all this weird stuff, like sending cast members used condoms and bullet casings and live rats or sending his assistants to drop dead pig carcasses on a table in the middle of a table read, all for like 10 minutes of screen time. And they like make you think that he dies when his helicopter crashes, which I knew... Oh my god, I forgot how much I hated that. When they crashed the helicopter early on, and they're like, oh my god, and they all just stand like, we're fine. I'm like, okay, these are characters we're supposed to believe are disposable, and they are all clearly invincible, so why do I care? Yeah, but also when, don't. But when they shoot down the Joker's helicopter and you're like well they really can't kill the joker because they need him and there was some stuff that the trailer showed that was definitely cut following that because i mean the joker had like 18 costume changes that were based on kind of famous joker images i don't know he was kind of 50 50 for me i liked that he seemed to be a methodical joker i can buy the idea of him being kind of a gang leader I don't like how every time he stepped into a scene, he was like... <laughs> okay, rank Shut him. up. Stop breathing. Rank him on the three cinematic Jokers, the three live-action Jokers. What about Cesar Romero or Connor Advite in The Man Who Laughs, which was the basis for the Joker? Okay, from... Hey, look up my name and look up the Joker, and you will find my opinions on this. I did an article, like, six years ago. Was it, you'll find your, it. Was it one of your clickbaity articles? No, this is one I chose by myself. It did very well. Okay, so from Tim Burton on, the last three... Nope. Then. I I did it years ago, and I'm doing it now. I said they were all appropriate for the time they were released, and I did this in 2008. So, Chris, I heard that article like nine years ago. Getting old. I wonder if that article's still out there. It's probably still on my computer. Anyway. um, No, any Joker that has existed, and I'm including Connor Advite and the Man Who Laughs, Cesar Romero's, and Batman 66, 
Jack Nicholson, Batman 89, Heath Ledger, Dark Knight. <sighs> Jared Leto's probably the worst. Let's, let's just be real. Well, it's, I mean, I think that it's too early to judge him. I, hey, Jared Leto has that. said that he wants to... you think it'd be cool to see what the Joker and Batman could do together? I'd like to see more of him. I'm not a big fan of recasting. If we can do something more with the Joker... I mean, part of what I disliked about Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor. I felt like that movie had the Joker and Lex, and then they decided to cut out the Joker, but just mash the two characters together. I at least think that Jared Leto has a vision of what the character should be. Yeah, I I say let him. This guy's an Oscar winner. He's a good actor. Let him let him play with the character. Give him a chance to play and explore the character because we haven't ever had the Joker in back to back movies. No, which would certainly be a change. And I know I wasn't a big fan necessarily of this movie, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of the tattoos. Yes, I know we've seen it in All-Star Batman and Rama, but guess what? That was kind of a crap series. I know it was Frank Miller and Jim Lee. It sounds like it's going to be picture perfect, but it's kind of awful. I don't need to sign off on the tattoo thing. I don't like that series. What about the scene where he's like laying in the middle of those knives and guns? And baby clothes, which he says might be totems that he's kind of stolen from victims so that's messed up it is well it's also messed up that diablo killed his wife and kids yeah but i think that kind of covers it for our main characters the villains are kind of what it well we didn't even cover rick flag he's fine he was supposed to be tom hardy probably would have been better as tom hardy oh i think it would have been yes but i mean still it wasn't bad it fits it works no um generally i liked him one of the things that they did in this movie they kept up saying like scott eastwood is this unnamed DC character, and ultimately he remained an unnamed DC character. His name is never mentioned, and then he dies. What about when? Um, Good seeing you, Scott Eastwood. Yeah. What about the the scenes where they're like pulling the, su- the Suicide Squad out of uh, their cells to get them together? I just got this sense like the first guy in every time was getting his ass kicked. They're like they were the red shirts of that like penitentiary, and the movie even like kind of hangs the lantern, like new guy, huh? Yeah. One of my favorite lines was when they were in like the situation room of the White House and uh, Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller. They're talking about like she talks about having a witch on the team, the Enchantress, and they're like you mean a witch? She's like, yeah, a real flying around making shit disappear witch. I thought that was a pretty cool line. Yeah, she had some really cool lines and some really cool stuff. Where she just friggin' lights up those those agents that were working for her when they were trying to get we need to thin the cast out. Bang, 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 bang. Like, she was like, and Will Smith even like called her like. That's some gangster shit. <laughs> I like... She, man, Viola Davis is a powerhouse. That was awesome. I would love to see her in But more how the hell did she movies. survive everything that happened to her in that movie? I love Dead Child's movie. How the hell are you alive? Because she was the only one who was acting her ass off. Bring her back in every movie. She was amazing. You know, I enjoyed the movie. It was fun. Am I, like, clamoring to go see it again immediately? No. Will I see it again at some point? Probably, yeah. I'm interested to see when the the Blu-ray comes out, what the deleted scenes they put on the Blu-ray are. Yeah. We'll and if they would m- have made a difference in the movie. <sighs> Overall. I, it just, there were parts of this. I say red box it, but boy, I'm being generous. I feel like there are parts of this movie, uh, there are times I was watching it and they're like, this movie is being victimized by what happened with Batman v Superman. As you can tell, it didn't go in the direction completely that they wanted it to go. And I think what happened with Batman v Superman changed things. And I feel like this movie was collateral damage at times. The 24% it has on Rotten Tomatoes is It was up from that. Generous. It was up from that when I got home. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's up like 28, 29%. And it's still crap. Star Wars into, uh, I mean, Star Wars. Uh, Star Trek Beyond is like in the upper 80s. Deservedly so. Um, But that will do it for our garbage movie. We are now getting into the next segment of the show, Letters to the Editor. Here's your letters to the editors. To submit your questions, email us at editorsnotecomics at gmail.com. All right. Who can I chastise this week for their stupidity? Uh, I know. Star Wars Fan 87, you're not stupid. You're probably a really nice person, and I forgive you. Well, you got nothing on this one, so I'm happy to add my two cents. So, our letter to the editor here today, Zach, is uh, from a fan of the show. I'd really like to add more female superheroes to my bookshelf. Do you have any favorites? I don't care if they're Marvel, DC, or something completely different. What do you say? 
I have no clue. But no, you don't. There was Lady Killer. I was in the shop today kind of looking at some of the stuff on the, the shelves. There's Lady Killer. There is Lady Killer. Lady Killer is a housewife who is also a serial killer. It's kind of fun. I have three answers to this. And we'll go with the biggie. We'll go with the one from the Trinity. Wonder Woman, anything that you can find by Greg Rucka or Gail Simone, they are the two writers who know contemporary Wonder Woman the best, hands down. If you are looking for two ongoing series for female characters, my main recommendation would be Mighty Thor. This is the current Thor book where we have a female Thor who... And I even kind of downplay it by saying female Thor because they did this whole big thing of this isn't female Thor, this isn't anything, this is just Thor. This is a Thor character. It is the character who is wielding the hammer. It's written by Jason Aaron. It is amazing. It is probably in my... And by probably, I mean definitely... For the books Marvel is coming out with, it's in my top three Marvel books. I love it to death. It's amazing. Read Mighty Thor. It's really, really amazing. The other one that I would recommend is Scarlet Witch, which is currently ongoing. It's being done by James Robinson, who is famous for his 1980s run of Starman, which phenomenal stuff. They're getting a different artist in every issue. It makes it a very disjointed book, but in the best way possible. Go read Scarlet Witch in Mighty Thor. Amazing, amazing books, or the current run of Wonder Woman, or anything you can find by Greg Rocket and Gail Simone. I don't really have any comedy here for it. These are just good things. What about uh, Black Widow? Uh, the current Black Widow run that's being co-written by Mark Waid, and I don't remember the other writer. Sorry, other writer is really good, too. It's mostly an artist-based book, which I don't mind. It's nice having that mix. Does that also cover our reading recommendations for the week? I've done Suicide Squad before. Go read Ostrander stuff. That's pretty straightforward. Or the Rebirth Suicide Squad that's going to be more based on the cinematic team. Even better. Hey, uh, one year anniversary for Editors No Comics. Tell us about the sale that's going on and how long. That's a fair question. I think, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. So I think it's the biggest sale that I've done. I'm going to do it through Sunday. Um, it's the biggest sale you've done in the last year. Yeah, I think in general. See what I did there? It's going to be buy two, get two free on all comics, excluding this week's new releases. Buy one, get half off on all graphic novels, 50% off all Blu-ray and DVDs, 40% off all toys and collectibles, and 40% off all shirts. It's one year. Come on. Let's do a big sale. Let's party. Is there going to be cake? I had cookies when I opened, but no, no cake. Oh. I think um, I said that the sale is going to go through Saturday, but then I remember that Sunday is Woodstock, so it'll probably be through Sunday. Woodstock? Yeah, in Hollowell. Oh, Sunday Woodstock. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. What's, the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. second one they've Are you going to dress up like a groovy guy? Like, you're going to put on some, like, groovy glasses and some tie-dye? No, I'm going to go work at my store. But are you going to wear, like, glasses? Like, are you going to be, like, tie-dyed out in your store? I might wear a hat. We didn't even talk about Will Smith's fun hat. Oh, yeah. His hat was pretty badass. It was very fun. He had a fun hat. I like how he was describing the isosceles, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. You're talking about assassinating people. Yeah. That was kind of cool. Let's plug. Yeah. Shall we plug? Yeah. You can find me at editorsnotecomics.com, at editorsnotecomics on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google Play. Did you say iTunes? iTunes, yeah. That's the main place. Yeah. To find rate, the show. review, subscribe on iTunes. We're getting a few more, but I'd like to see more. We should uh, figure out how to get on Spotify, too. There's many platforms I should apparently find to put the show so i'm told saturate the market um, saturate the market then of course you can find me at 210 water street unit 3 in hollowell maine where i am generally the guy behind the counter uh, there's a nice big flag out front i hold the high score uh on the pinball machine it's over four thousand points good on you you know i do what i can where are you at at junior rich on twitter and no place else. No place else. I'm a avoid other places. But if you'd like a copy of his house key, I do have it. So, no, 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 no. I gotta get that back before I leave this house. Never. Why do you want a key to my house? Like you said, the only if I get home and there's my liquor cabinet is gone, I'm not gonna know. You I'm, don't have a liquor cabinet. You have four empty beers. It's a liquor cabinet. First of all, I will steal the physical cabinet. I was going to say, if the liquor cabinet is not there someday, I'm going to come here first. Because the liquor first. itself is worth nothing, but the cabinet was worth a little. This is the first place I'm going to come. There's a bottle of Bailey's in there. I didn't even notice Yeah, there's <laughs> a bottle of Bailey's in there. Did I buy that? Uh, no, that was my previous bottle. Your other, your other, The bottle that you got me is, uh, is in storage. Oh, okay. For when the time comes from that bottle that I have now is emptied. 
I think it'd be kind of tacky to have two bottles of Bailey's in my liquor cabinet and have that be the only liquor in my... There was some Crown Royal in there, but uh, the guy who has the Crown Royal, uh, who, I, who I coach with, he took it. Good on him. We'll be back next week with The Killing Joke. I saw there was a book and a DVD at the top of the staircase. I feel like I have homework. Oh, boo-hoo. What do you mean, oh, boo-hoo? I have to go do entertainment-related things. Life is hard. It is when you're taking classes and you're getting ready to coach double sessions for football and you're a teacher and you're, like, ending your summer. But I'm actually kind of excited after Suicide Squad. Why don't you go back to your cat and your bottle of Baileys? I will, with the killing joke. We'll be back next week. You surly son of a gun. Indeed I am. We'll be back. So long. Bye.